Hey guys, this is the final video on the version 4 board I made for the PSP. There's two sections we want to cover, the LCD and the connectors. Let's start with the LCD. The board I made before this one, version 3, used a composite LCD from a backup camera and that worked using a converter board on the Pi's composite video pin. The Raspberry Pi has a better feature though called DPI and this feature lets us route the Pi's pin directly to certain LCDs. There's one pretty major downside to using it though, it uses a ton of pins. The full mode on it uses every pin, and even the reduced modes use most of them. It also blocks most of the useful interfaces like I2C, and I had to get creative to make that work at all. So I went with a screen that has the same 480 by 272 resolution as the original PSP one. The only components here are for the backlight, and that's only needed because it runs at a higher voltage than the rest of the board. I used the MP3302 boost converter to power the backlight. It has an enable pin that's used to power the backlight on and off, and it can also be used to dim the LCD with a PWM signal coming from the Pi. I use that on this board, and it saves a ton of power. Recently, some of you on Discord found an 800 by 480 resolution screen that Buy Display started selling. It's a drop-in replacement for the one I shipped with a kit, and it works, but after some testing, I noticed that an early version of this LCD has an issue, and it causes my board's power off feature to break. They fixed this in the newest version, so it does not have this issue, and the power off feature on my board works just fine with it. Here's the original LCD this company shipped last year, this is the one that has the issue, and here's the newest version that fixes the issue. I put a link in the description below for that LCD if you want to get one, and there's also a link to the updated config.txt file to set the resolution in software. And let's move on to the last bit, all the connectors. We can start with a 40 pin LCD connector. It's low profile because the LCD bracket sits really close to the board, and most standard connectors are too thick to fit there. The situation is the same for the connectors used for the buttons, so the 10 pin and 24 pin connectors are also low profile. So I said earlier that the LCD took nearly all the pins and left none available for these buttons. Here's how I got around that. Starting with Pi Zero 1.3, they added something called the CSI connector. It's normally used when you want to add a camera, but we can tap into it for some other things using its I2C pins. I use this cable to carry the signal between the Pi and my board and this I2C cable lets the Pi communicate with two chips I added, the MCP23017 and the ADS1015. The MCP is a GPIO expander and gives an extra 16 GPIO pins that are used for buttons. The ADS is an analog to digital converter and lets the Pi read analog voltages, which gives us battery monitoring and joystick. This joystick works exactly the same as it did on the original PSP. The board has these four gold-plated pads which make contact with the PSP's rubber conductive pad. This is another thing that was pretty hard to find since the LCD bracket sits so close to it, the pads had to be just the right shape in order to keep them from shorting out on the LCD bracket. I went with gold-plated pogo pins for the micro SD port and USB connection. Lots of people had trouble soldering these pads on version 3 and this minimized some of the soldering needed. The main soldering in this kit was this 40 pin GPIO header. This header is what carries power, the LCD signal, and a few of the buttons. The rest of the connectors are mainly for audio. Speaker wire is attached using this one millimeter JST connector. There was also an audio and micro SD header used for adding an optional headphone board and for relocating the micro SD connector to the left side of the case. So that about covers it for this board. I stopped shipping it a while ago, and these videos are here for anyone looking to use my designs in their own projects. All the info can be found in the description below. So one final thing, you may have heard that Raspberry Pi is shipping some new compute modules. Keep an eye on my YouTube and Discord channels because I may have something to show you guys soon. Thanks for watching.